There's no question at all that this administration, this incoming administration, chose actively to embrace Bitcoin and other things. We'll see how many other things, but definitely Bitcoin. And so that alone is worth some momentum. Now, there's a difference between talking to get votes, which is clearly what he did, right? I don't believe that the Donald has a wallet of his own. I don't think he bought Bitcoin or any other coin for that matter. I think his son probably has some, and I think JD has definitely has some, and there are other people in the administration. But I don't think Donald Trump really cared. But someone told him, you know, hey, there's probably 100 million people that own this stuff. Some of them are gonna vote. So you could say, I love you and vote for me. Bitcoin has recently entered a key phase in its market cycle, according to Tom Lee, co-founder of Fundstrap. In a November 29th interview with Wealthian, Lee suggested that Bitcoin could reach $250,000 within the next 12 months. He explained that the upcoming halving event, which reduces the supply of Bitcoin, combined with rising institutional interest, is setting the stage for a price surge. At the time of writing, Bitcoin is priced at $97,343. Lee believes that Bitcoin's price will follow its historical pattern, with a significant increase in value following the halving cycle. He said current conditions make it highly probable that Bitcoin will hit $250,000 next year. One of the factors contributing to this is the shift in the political landscape in the United States, with an incoming government that has shown support for Bitcoin. Lee pointed out that if the U.S. begins to accumulate Bitcoin as part of its strategic reserve, it could lend further legitimacy to the cryptocurrency and boost its price. We'll dive into Mark Yusko's insightful discussion about why blockchain represents the next major computing platform, what he calls the truth net. From Bitcoin's revolutionary origins 15 years ago to its potential to disrupt the $7 trillion trust industry, Mark offers a compelling narrative on the future of value transfer and the growing momentum behind digital gold. Are you ready to discover why Bitcoin is on its way to six-digit valuations and beyond? Stick around as Mark unpacks the cycles of adoption, the impact of supply and demand shocks, and why governments worldwide are taking notice. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Your support keeps us bringing you insightful content like this. Blockchain technologies, of which you know, cryptocurrencies are a use case of blockchain technology, is, I believe, the next computing platform, right? This goes all the way back to 54 with the mainframe, 68 with the microchip, 82 with the personal computer, 96 with the internet, 2010 with the mobile net, and now 2024 right now with the, the truth net, as I like to call it, where we swap trust with truth. And that all started 15 years ago, with the invention of Bitcoin, and it's evolved over the years. And I think today is just an example of people waking up to say, oh, yeah, maybe this isn't going away. Maybe this technology is going to continue to evolve. And hey, wait a minute, this is a better way to transfer value. And, you know, the, the big thing for me, you know, the aha moment for me, Austin, was, um, you know, I've been an investor in tech for a long time. And in the early days, it was Web 1, right, which was the disruption of media, you know, by and large, you know, information could be anywhere. You could post a website and, you know, Encyclopedia Britannica was really valuable. And then Wikipedia became more valuable. Uh, so then it, it webbed and in, in, evolved into Web 2 and, and really commerce got disrupted. And, you know, commerce was pretty big business. And you can, I, the aha moment for me was I literally sitting at a, a red light and I bought a plane ticket. 90 seconds, bought a plane ticket. And I'm like, yeah, this, this is going to be big, like super big. And now we're in this world where financial services, which is the biggest industry in the world, and it's not close, right? There's no close second. Um, is being is being disrupted and it's a seven trillion with it with a t seven trillion remember one dollar a second for thirty one thousand seven hundred and ten years seven of those babies every year 
gets extracted from us as users of the trust industry, banks, brokers, insurance companies, et cetera. All of that is gonna get disrupted, not tomorrow, but over time. And you know, Bitcoin's just the monetary use case, digital gold, but there are other use cases. Anyway, that's a long answer to, to your question, but it's, it's such an important question. Everybody's focused, oh my God, what if it hits 100K? Well, it is gonna hit 100K. And then it's gonna hit 200K and then 300K. Because it's not about Bitcoin. It's one Bitcoin will always be one Bitcoin. And there's only 21 million. In fact, there probably aren't even really 21 million because there's some that are lost or stolen. So, but one Bitcoin is always one Bitcoin. What changes is the unit which people value it in. I talk about this all the time. There's never been a bear market in Venezuela for Bitcoin because the Bolivar went straight down. So Bitcoin valued in Bolivars doesn't have the wild fluctuations like the dollar, the yen or the euro. Uh, and right now, you know, we're back to printing more money. And uh, look, I think the current administration, incoming administration is better for debt and money printing, which is actually worse for number go up. Like people ask me, well, who do you want to win? I'm like, I actually want someone to win, but I don't really care in the short term because I don't think there's gonna be that that much difference. So the long term, clearly one side was gonna destroy the currency. I mean, <laughs> the other side, the Democrats were, were well on their way to creating the banana republic. Um, I, I think with a little bit of fiscal discipline, that'll make our lives better. But the number go up will be impacted because remember, one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, but the amount of dollars we're devaluing it against will change. I, I tweeted this out the other day, three years ago in 21, we got the, we got the email, you know, we're, we're just not even going to have Thanksgiving. So don't bother coming, you know, now they had Thanksgiving, but we just weren't welcome. Two years ago, all right, you can come, but you're sitting at the kids table. Okay. Last year, all right, you can come, but you're sitting with Uncle Ned. I didn't even know I had an Uncle Ned, right, wedding crashers. This year, oh my God, head of the table, two turkey legs for you. Can I get you another glass of champagne? I mean, this is gonna be the best Thanksgiving ever. And I'll stick with what I said six months ago that I, I thought absolutely no, no question in my mind we were getting to six digit BTC this year in dollars. No question, why? Well, because fair value was gonna be in the, the low to mid eighties and we would blow right through that because of animal spirits. And whether we got to 110 or 120 or 150, I don't really know. It just depends how much leverage gets in the system. But this week, I, I'm fairly certain, I can never be certain, certain, but I'm fairly certain we'll blow right through 100K, then we'll get a really big parabolic move, you know, sometime between now and December. And, you know, then it's harder to judge. I mean, you know, we don't have that many cycles to look at, but the cycles are very consistent because humans are gonna human. When the price is below fair value, investors, people I like to consider myself an investor, I like to buy things below fair value. That's what I do for a living. And so you buy them and you just hold them. Um, then what happens is the price starts to rise and get closer to fair value. The traders come in, they're like, oh, movement. I, I need movement. I don't really care about the fair value. I don't really care at all. I just want to trade. And nothing wrong with trading. I stink at it. I never asked me to trade your money. I'm bad at it. Um, and most humans are bad at it, but, but there are some good traders. There, there are a few good traders. But then the speculators come in. Well, what's a speculator? Well, speculator is someone who doesn't really care about anything other than someone needs the other side of a sale, right? Oil producers need to sell their production for it. I'm sitting in Tulsa, Oklahoma in a hotel room uh, with my, my in-laws. And um, so here they sell the production forward and the speculator has to take the other side because for every buyer, there has to be a seller. For every seller, there has to be a buyer. So speculators are not evil. They just don't care about what they're buying. They just take the other side of the sale. 
Well, then as the price really starts to move, this is the problem. That's when the gamblers come. And the gamblers bring leverage and leverage tends to accelerate the trend until such time as it ends. And, you know, I, I love this. Everyone looks at these parabolic charts and like, oh, this is great, this is great, this is gonna go on forever. Show me one, Austin, I defy anyone watching this video, show me one chart that goes like this and then stays flat. You can't do it. They, they, they all go up and then they come down. Now, they eventually, like the Bitcoin chart, had this big parabolic move in 2013 and then it crashed 84%. And then it had a big parabolic move in 17 and it crashed 84%. Then it had a big parabolic move in 21 and it crashed 76%. Now, I tweeted this out a long time ago. When you look at that 2013, right? It was a 20 fold move. It looks barely visible on the chart today. And the one from 2017 was really big, right? We went from 10,000 to 20,000 in eight weeks. No, I'm sorry, five weeks from November 6th to December 18th. We went up $10,000 in five weeks, just like that. And you can barely see it. Now this move eventually, and then the 21 move looked really big. And then we had the crash. Well, now we're way above the switch. So it's a series of higher highs and higher lows, that's the long-term adoption. And that's not going away. That's not going away. There's no question at all that this administration, this incoming administration, chose actively to embrace Bitcoin and other things. We'll see how many other things, but definitely Bitcoin. And so that alone is worth some momentum. Now, there's a difference between talking to get votes, which is clearly what he did, right? I don't believe that the Donald has a wallet of his own. I don't think he bought Bitcoin or any other coin for that matter. I think his son probably has some, and I think JD has definitely has some, and there are other people in the administration. But I don't think Donald Trump really cared. But someone told him, you know, hey, there's probably 100 million people that own this stuff. Some of them are going to vote. So you could say, I love you and vote for me. And I, I'm sure you saw the video when he went to Bitcoin Nashville. I was there. And he gave his speech, right? <laughs> I, I love the look on his face. He said, on day one, I'll fire Gary Gensler. And people went crazy. And he's like, I mean, he was literally shocked at how like emotional and, and he's like, I'm going to say that again. On day one, I will fire Gary Gensler and the place went crazy. And then every time, and I'll free Rosh and play with him great. And I'll do this. He's like, damn, this, this is real. And so no question that that's worth something. But the hard part is the talk versus the walk. So yeah, you can say we're going to do a strategic Bitcoin reserve. Easy to say harder to do, harder to get that bill actually passed, even with a majority, still going to be tougher to get it passed. So if that happens, then I actually might have to update. Because why would I have to update? Well, because if you think about the two reasons that the price of an asset moves. So one is the fundamental value changes. Well, how does the fundamental value changes? Well, you make something new, you invent some new innovation, you, you're a company, you make lots of widgets and you create new cash flows. And that's really not what Bitcoin or other cryptos are. So, so that's not it. Okay, well then, then what, what else can happen? Well, you could have two people agree on the price for a small amount. And I may be a miner and I need to get a certain amount to on, on my Bitcoin to pay my bills. And so unless you offer me that amount, I'm not going to sell. And so I'll hold until I get the price I need to cover my bills. And that's kind of why post having the price has this upward trajectory, because if my block rewards go down, I need to get more money per unit 
than I used to get to cover my bills or I go out of business. So the propensity to sell is reduced, which means the bid has to come up. Beautiful, I mean, absolutely beautiful coding because that momentum, that price change then attracts attention. So this is where the, the last part of value change can happen is if there is a supply shock, right? Which is a having event, there's less supply of new, new coins and so many are, are hodled but then there could be a demand shock. If a government, not El Salvador, not that El Salvador is not cool, but it's small. I mean, it's teeny tiny and, you know, they have a few hundred, you know, a uh, few hundred thousand, yeah, a few hundred thousand dollars, no, a few hundred million of, of value. Okay, I mean, that's not nothing. Um, but if we're talking about a million coins, arguably six-ish percent of the supply, if I say the supply is about 18-ish, that's a big deal. And so that would would say, okay, Mark, you're conservative. And now, you know, this 120, 150, now maybe Max 220, of course he's been calling for 220 for a long time. And I, I love Max and Stacy, but I, I, do, I do poke fun a little bit. Um, oh, because my partner, Jason Williams, we got into this debate you know, uh, two years ago at the, or actually three years ago at the last cycle, you know, when things were going up and like, it's going to 200K. I'm like, there is no way it's going to 200K yet. Someday, but not now. And it didn't. You know, we would get to 74K or whatever it was. Um, but so eventually it will hit 240. And I read this morning, someone was saying, oh, it'll be 250 in, in eight weeks. If, the bill gets passed in the first hundred days, and that wouldn't be eight weeks, but we got, well, it's about say about, about eight weeks. So eight weeks from now, you know, we'll be post inauguration. And if they got that bill passed in the first week and suddenly people were like, holy crap, I got to front run the US government. Yeah, things can go up faster. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into blockchain technology and Bitcoin's game-changing trajectory with Mark Yusko. If you found this video valuable, let us know by smashing that like button and sharing your thoughts in the comments section. What do you think about the Truthnet and Bitcoin's path toward mass adoption? We'd love to hear your perspective. And remember to subscribe to the channel for more expert insights into the world of blockchain, cryptocurrency, and finance. Don't miss out on the latest updates and analyzes that can help you stay ahead in this rapidly evolving space. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.